from Lego Star Wars. The battle to save the planet Umbara is on. Build the Z-95 Headhunter. Arm the rocket and lift off into action. The Jedi and the clones are victorious. New from Lego Star Wars. Follow the Yoda Chronicles at lego.com slash Star Wars. Ask your parents first. Hi, everyone, and welcome once again to Geek Fest Rants. My name is Carlos Perone, and today I have James joining us. Say hi, James. Hello, hello. Today we are going to be talking about New York Toy Fair 2013. Specifically, we're going to be tackling Lego. We are both big fans of the Lego company and its products. Specifically, we like the movie products. And similar to last year, we were able to actually go in there and have a tour with one of the people there and visit the actual booth. Because if you guys remember New York Toy Fair, it's held at the Javits Center in New York City. And they basically divide the floor into little sections. In some sections, they're a little bigger than just, you know, a one-man booth type of deal. They're kind of like these little small office spaces almost where they have these little private showrooms that are quite big at times. And Lego had one of the biggest ones there. And through James, we were able to meet up with one of the Lego representatives. Her name was Amanda Santoro. And she was able to give us a quick view of all of these upcoming movie related items that we were very interested in. Now, later on on the show, we're going to listen to an interview I did with Amanda. But before that, we were able to see a lot of these items through the internet. These pictures get posted right away. Some people tweet information about them. Some people post pictures. And luckily, we were able to see these even before we were there. So let's talk a little bit, James, about what pictures you've seen and your impressions of all these different lines, because there's a number of lines we like. And let's begin with, let's say, Star Wars. Well, I was very impressed this year with the Star Wars presentation through Lego. I love Legos. It seems to be my favorite toy line now. I think what they're doing is very exciting because <laughs> they're taking various licenses. And I think they're in a position right now where they've mastered how to make the sets look like what they're supposed to look like in this line, in whatever world it's in and as well as market and package them to make them really exciting. As far as the Star Wars ones this year, they have still have it split up essentially into two or three parts. You have the movie line, the stuff that's based on the movies. You have the Clone War style. I don't think they label them as Clone Wars per se, but they're still in the Clone Wars style and the ships and the environments. And then they have a new third set that we might talk about in a little bit. I'll let you discuss that when you get to it. And I like what they're doing. I like how they've packaged them. What they've done is they've taken a lot of the ships and a lot of the play sets that they've done previously, not as well, and now they've redone them. And you get either a better playability, better build, and what's most important to a lot of people is new figures or figures that have yet to be released. So it's almost like, in addition to the Kenner figures of the 70s and 80s and now the Hasbro figures of today, Lego has almost created their own figure line, even though they're not allowed to really just call them figures. But there are hundreds of Lego figures now based on the characters, and a lot of people want to be as completist as they can, especially when it comes to things like clones or Jedi or, you know, main characters, the different itinerations of them. So... I wind up buying sets that I've purchased already, and I'm more excited about it because I get new figures. <laughs> now, what I saw, and I'm sure you've seen these pictures too, is that most of the stuff we're seeing now is being packaged in the Yoda box, meaning that green Yoda logo box. And the way that they had it all on display there was, first, you got to kind of see the stuff that is already kind of on the shelves, has been on the shelves for a while now, and then they slowly start transitioning to some of the newer items. Let's go over some of these new items. One of them, you know, the smaller scale ones that I saw was a Mandalorian transport vessel, which is kind of from Clone Wars, which is really interesting. The fact that they are, you know, they're giving each 
branch of the Star Wars, uh, you know, universe, its own little individual toys, which is cool because this way they're not ignoring anyone. Yeah, the various sets and specifically the Yoda packaging. I like the Yoda packaging. It's the green. That was supposed to be a universal style based on the fact that the prequels were going to be released in 3D, Episode 2 and Episode 3 this year. One early part of the year, one later part of the year, the later part being Revenge of the Sith, and that would have utilized a Vader look, more reddish and orange. I like the Yoda look. I think it pops on the boxes, and it gets your attention in the aisle, which is obviously what they're trying to do to get you to look at and buy their toys. The previous sets, some of them were nice. It depended on what year. I didn't really love the mall packaging. I kind of like the clone packaging they had a few years ago. It was more like an ice blue coloring, white, very clean. But this Yoda coloring of green jumps out at you, and it really makes it interesting for the artwork and the the whole box. So that came out around December for the winter releases, and it's continuing, it looks like, into the summer months with these new packaging, with these new sets. The most exciting new set looks to be the Jabba Sail Barge, which I guess is to kind of tie in a little bit with the Return of the Jedi themes that they've been doing, the anniversary being uh, with the Jabba sets. So Jabba Sail Barge seems to be the next progression, which is a remake itself, but again, a nicer build, probably a little cheaper, I recall, but I, I'm not sure about that exactly, but more modern figures. Now, the Sail Barge, I think, came out when they were still using the yellow-faced minifigures, so now these will be more the flesh tones, and the paint job on Jabba will be more complete that you actually see his eyes and you know some detail on him and some of the other characters. So I'm looking forward to that to complete a Return of the Jedi uh, Tatooine kind of diorama. Not that I open very many sets, so I probably will never see what's inside the box. Yeah, that's a pretty cool set. It's one of the more expensive sets, but it also comes with a couple of minifigures that I've never seen before made as minifigures. So for people that are into minifigures, it's a cool way of getting these minifigures. Yeah, I noticed also, to try to tie into the uh, Attack of the Clones look, they've remade the ATTE Again, a better build, some extra Jedi that we haven't seen yet. And there's a new, an all-new set that looks like a battle on Geonosis, it's called, I believe. But it kind of ties in the Yoda and Dooku battle, as well as some Geonosian characters that we haven't had very many of those yet. I think Poggle the Lesser. So it's a good progression when they add some new stuff, plus redo some old stuff. And, you know, I'm very excited about it. I know I'm going to buy and spend a lot of my money. I can't wait. Yeah, it's definitely a way of getting you stuff that you've never seen before. And that particular one that you just mentioned, you know, you actually get a set, not necessarily a ship, but an actual location, you know, uh, that has association with a Star Wars movie. The other one they're kind of releasing, which is, in a way, it's kind of new, the fact that they're adding these things, is the Republic gunship, you know, large-sized Republic gunship. And it actually has the turrets attached to the ends where you can actually fit a figure into it, which is kind of cool because, you know, usually you're not able to do that sort of thing. And I guess they have the ability to do this now because of the extra parts and all that stuff. Well, Lego has been trying harder to make more playability and more film accuracy. And the size of the Lego figures give them the opportunity to make a bigger ship, but allow the figures to go into little areas of this playset or this ship that... You know, the three and three quarter inch figures, they can't really do much of that except for individual fighters because there's just not enough room and people are only willing to spend, you know, maybe 30 to 50 dollars on a ship. You know, when you have to start charging 200 to 250 dollars for a Millennium Falcon because it's bigger and it has more playability, that's great. And there'll be some people who will spend it. I have it, but most people are buying for their kids and they're trying to get as many toys for as little money. With Legos, the bigger ships tend to be around a hundred bucks. Again, it's a lot of money for some people, but you can do a whole lot with that, plus the fact that it's buildable in many different ways, or you can mix it in with sets already. I happen to like to either not open them or open them and build them as the package instructs, but some people, they just create their own ships, and that's the whole point of Lego. It's so much fun that you can do various things. Another thing that they're introducing for the first time is a ship that is apparently exclusive to the Lego company because of some future programming that Lego is going to be having, having to do with Yoda and the cartoon kind of series they're going to be doing. It's kind of like a stealth ship type of deal. It looks like Lego is 
filling a niche on, in the Star Wars world by creating the Yoda Chronicles. Maybe the name will change, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to call it. And that's kind of like, they created shows based on Ninjago. It was a series, you know, it was on for two years. They're doing that with Shima now. So I think they're trying to have a presence either on TV or the internet or through DVDs for Lego Star Wars. And that'll eventually let them, I guess, make new video games maybe and these new sets. And this new set is a independent design, not part of any prequel mm-hmm. or, Correct. or original trilogy or any, you know, EU. And I guess it's a way to get kids, probably younger kids, into the Lego world. They have to constantly keep fresh. We're adults. We're going to keep liking Legos, you know, for the foreseeable future. But they always need to find a way to rejuvenate. You know, Lego's been making Star Wars since 1999. Well, the kids who started in 1999 are teenagers or college students or adults, and they're just not into it. So you have to keep trying to find a way to lure the younger kids into your product. And if they're into Star Wars, this is a way to get them into it. And then they'll buy the other stuff eventually, you would figure. Exactly, exactly. One more item I want to mention, because like I said before, a lot of items are already on the shelves, so we're not going to go over those a lot, because I'm sure you've probably seen them already. They treated what they're selling and what's upcoming. It's not like a museum where the old, old stuff is. They're showing stuff that's either available now, starting in January, or upcoming for the summer months. So their goal is to sell. We happen to be collectors and fans, but Ultimately, it's for people who are owning stores to see what's coming and to say, yeah, we're going to place orders for this or we're going to place orders for that. Right, right. And the ones I was talking about are the Corporate Alliance tank and the homing spider droid. Yeah, again, more Attack of the Clones inspired stuff as well as the Clone Wars TV show. Those things appear from time to time. So it's a good tie in for both. But I do believe this early push for Attack of the Clones style stuff was because of the 3D releases, which have been canceled now, at least put on hold. And when you actually start targeting more towards the Christmas time there, once again, this is something I've never gotten, but I know they're very popular, is the advent calendars. Yeah, they've actually become more and more popular. They add special pieces. Once in a while, they'll add a rare piece that's only available through that set. I haven't gotten into it. They're not that cheap. They're about 30 or $40 dollars. That's a little too kiddy for me. If I had a kid, I think for sure I would have them, but I just don't get into them. I try to put my money towards the bigger sets, and Mm -hmm. there's even some surprise sets every year, like the R2 set, and there's an upcoming surprise set this year of an X-Wing. So I think that's where I'll stick my money. Well, the next display that we also got to see is the superheroes display, which is really broken into, if you can kind of say it that way, into the DC and to the Marvel side. Now, obviously, this year we don't have an Avengers movie, but they still are able to come out with some secondary or tertiary kind of setups where you do get to see some of these superhero sets, aside from the ones that are coming out with movies like Iron Man 3 and Man of Steel. Now, what were your first impressions of the Iron Man 3 sets? Because there's apparently three that are coming out. Yeah, I love the Iron Man stuff. I love the Avengers and all the superhero sets. And I knew they would be a slam dunk because who doesn't like superheroes? Most kids around the world can identify with the comic book characters. And now the fact that these movies have been so good, it's just a great tie-in to have Legos. So I love the little figures as well as some of the environments. And I have to say, Iron Man is one of my favorite superhero movies. But I wasn't that impressed with the upcoming Man of Steel trailer and the look of things but i'm actually more excited about it now even if i don't like the movie i love the sets that they've introduced of the superman sets and some of the characters that come with them as well as spider-man now i know that these spider-man sets aren't based on any particular movie you know every now and then they try to you know tie it in but this particular run of the spider-man legos is more based on the cartoon i believe it's on cartoon network or one of the boomerang or one of those channels so it's great that we have the spider-man x-men but they don't have to necessarily be based exactly on the movie they kind of even there was discussion and we've talked about this in the past the batman movies the nolan batman movies were a little too heavy for kids the legos when they were created in 2008 based on Batman, were more like the animated series or the cartoon or just generic Batman. But they've since gone back, and they made a set that just came out this year. Yes, yes. They did have that one on display. Based on the movie with the bat and the um, The the tumbler. tumbler. And so they kind of went back into it when they realized 
there is a demand for it, and the kids are watching it. And even though they're not directly advertised as the Dark Knight Rises or, you know, Batman Begins or anything, they don't have to. Batman is still universal, and when people see this, they know that was in that movie. I want it. And it made it fun. It, it really was nice. And I'm looking forward to the new sets, and the Iron Man stuff looked great with the new Mandarin, I guess, being the bad guy. A lot of people don't know who that is, but I guess once the movie comes out, it'll fit a whole lot better. What's cool about the Iron Man stuff is that even though they showed us three sets, the sets are not very spoilery. In other words, a lot of the information you see on these three sets, it's information that you kind of can see into the trailer. If you watch the trailer, the scenes are there, so it's not very, you know, shocking. And these are kind of like mid rangey kind of sets. I'm sure they probably have a couple of more big ones coming down the line, but really interesting looking stuff that some of it has never been tried before, which hopefully will work out for them. Now, the Man of Steel stuff that you talked about earlier, apparently we were not able, not just us, but anybody, they did not let people take pictures of Man of Steel stuff on the actual display area because they're trying to hold that off a little bit. But some pictures were already shown on the internet, you know, official pictures of what these sets look like. And I guess for Man of Steel, it's a little more dangerous as far as spoilers go because the sets that are coming are very descriptive of what's happening in the movie and the specific characters and what they're wearing and this and that. So they're trying to be a little more cautious about it, but they do look really good, the, the Man of Steel stuff. And the other ones, like James mentioned before, Batman stuff, it's stuff that's already been out there. They did some crossover with Aquaman and Mr. Freeze and Batman wearing all white. These are sets that are already are out there. So the superheroes are definitely going to keep coming. And I'm sure as we progress into the future years with more Avengers, these things are never going to stop. They're just going to keep cranking them out. They're doing an excellent job. And towards the end of the year, there's already been announced the Lego Marvel superheroes video game. So I'm sure that's going to create excitement, and there'll be sets that maybe appear in that game. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised one bit. Now, let's move on to Lone Ranger, which is a line that is brand new. It is obviously associated with the Lone Ranger film that's going to come out. But what I found most surprising about it is, you know, obviously the quality of the product is really good, and you'll hear about it in a few seconds. But the fact that they are putting so much trust and so much uh, money into a set that is technically a standalone film, something tells me they feel this is a franchise in the works. Well, I think, ironically, everything we've talked about so far is tied into Disney now. That wasn't originally the case, but uh, <laughs> superheroes, the, other. <laughs> the Marvel superheroes are Disney, and Star Wars is now Disney, ironically. But this Lone Ranger is part of the Disney licensing, and this is a big movie coming out. But what I think is fantastic about what Disney uh, and Lego have done, they're obviously natural fits together, but Lego has had certain genres or certain themes over the years that have been hugely successful and the western set and cowboys were one of the most popular and fortunately for them this movie will fit that niche it's something that people like who collect legos and it's an upcoming popular movie the same happened fortunately with pirates of the caribbean the pirates series of legos were always very popular huge ships they're some of the most expensive to collect nowadays, but what's going to happen is as these different movies come and they fit into these genres, it's a nice thing for collectors. Even, you could say a few years ago, it was more of a failed movie, but The uh, Prince of Persia was kind of like an adventurer's kind of set, and it had great pieces and nice animal pieces, and you know it seemed pretty cool. These are all fitting very nicely in LEGO's master plan kind of like Harry Potter did a few years ago that tied in with the castles and the medieval stuff. And they've had successful series with cars. They're going to be doing some with princesses. And I know there's some Duplo even coming out that have the movie Planes that's coming out in the summer that will tie in a little bit with the cars Duplo. More for the kids. It's not quite my cup of tea. But it's nice that, you know, all these things are kind of like fitting in just right for Lego. And I'm a big fan, so I'm I'm thrilled with it. Yeah, well, the Long Ranger stuff, like I said, it looks great. The packaging is really good. They have six sets, you know, ranging from the cheap end to the high end stuff. There's actually seven because there'll be one like mini set that come in a package, just oh, like a little ones. baggie. Well, the high end set is an actual railroad. It's a steam powered railroad that apparently has never been made before. You know, you could kind of say, oh well, all they got to do is take cowboys and Indian stuff and just repurpose it. But no, yes, they do use certain 
pieces over and over again, but there's a certain percentage of stuff that has to be manufactured from scratch, specifically iconic characters. You have your Tonto, your Lone Ranger, you know, the bad guys and the specific, you know, characters in the film. But they do have, like I said, five or six different sets that, you know, with different price points. They have a stagecoach. They have the Silver Mine Showdown. They have a bank, you know, the, the town, the Indian village, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that... I'm sure kids are going to absolutely enjoy. And if the more successful the movie is, the more they're going to want this because this is a great, great set that they come up with. Now, let's move on to another one of our big ones, uh, Lord of the Rings, which is one we kind of started watching a little over a year ago when they first announced they were going to put them out, not only because of the Lord of the Rings merchandise, but because of the Hobbit merchandise. Now, this year, we do have a Hobbit film coming up way later in the year, and they weren't ready to show us any of that, but they did show us other Lord of the Ring material that is right around the corner. What did you think of that one, James? Well, I love specifically, like I said earlier, the pirate being a very popular Lego theme. One of the new sets is a pirate ship based on the Lord of the Rings, and yes. it looked great. And there was a couple other sets, another part of a dark castle and things like that. And these are really nice. And in fact, I like the Lord of the Rings movies. I love the Hobbit movie, but they weren't my favorites. But I actually like them more through the video game and through these sets. And I actually even understand it better because I, you know, it's been 10 years since some of the Lord of the Rings movies, and I've forgotten a little bit of stuff. I like what I see here. I like what they're doing, and there's some fantastic characters and pieces and goblin kings and things like that that just really look great. And the pirate ship in particular features the ghost fighters and creatures and stuff like that. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And I like that they're putting some money in it. They kind of did this with... Raiders of the Lost Ark characters of the Indiana Jones series a few years ago. The new movie was coming, but they released sets based on the classic movies, and they did that here. They knew The Hobbit was coming, and to get The Hobbit license, they knew it was a no-brainer to make sets based on the three previous movies that were huge. And from what I've seen, there's not a problem getting people's attention. They're selling pretty well. Yeah, it's a good thing uh, that they haven't abandoned the original one. I guess in a way it makes sense because while you're not ready for more Hobbit product, you start pumping out the traditional Lord of the Rings products, which they do have tons of material that they can mine for toys. I mean, obviously the last wave that they put out, they didn't cover everything. The pirate ship, like you said, it's a very pretty important scene in the third film. There's also the Battle at the Black Gate, which is that big, big fight at the end also. You know, the Black Castle and Sauron and all in black and everything. Well, it's a good plan that they have here because what they're doing is the Hobbit movies seem to be coming out approximately the later part of the year. So they'll have the sets based on the new movie, and then in between they can pepper in classic sets with some newer sets, things like that. And I think it's really exciting. Yes. The other one is the Council of Elrond which you get to see the actual elfin city, if you will, which is kind of cool. And like I said, they have plenty of material to go on. This is practically an endless supply of material. Now, what's interesting is the fact that, like I said, they couldn't show us any Hobbit stuff because it's not ready to be displayed yet. However, if you think about it, last year we kind of got to see some Hobbit stuff that will be in the next film because something happened last year that we talked about briefly, and that is when they unveiled all of the Hobbit product – and the previews and the pictures and all that stuff, at the time, we were still thinking we were getting two movies. And because of that, they put out Lego Hobbit material that was never in this first film. Right now, I can only think of one set that is having to do with a whole bunch of dwarves hiding in barrels, either at some kind of a... Yep, the barrel escape. At a wine or a beer or something. And they put these toys out, and then I remember seeing the film, and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't remember that scene. Well, I have a feeling, I don't know this for a fact, that once they decided they needed to split the film into three parts, some of these scenes got relegated to the second part of the film. And some people who actually read the story and are more familiar with it than I am, they said, yeah, that's a scene that's coming up. There's a spider scene also that, you know, the set is more relevant with one of the future films. So. Sure. 
I guess that's a, a little mistake they made, and they couldn't really go back and pull the products because the products were already made. I guess all the boxes were printed. Everything was done. You know, it might have been shipped out already. So it's like, you know what? Let them keep it. Who cares at this point? We'll just call it like an early bird set, a, a teaser set. Yeah, there you go. And what's funny is that if you think about it, because of this, they probably have to now manufacture more sets in terms of different locations because I'm only talking about maybe one or two more sets that were released kind of early. And for something like this, I think they put out something like five or six different things, you know, for every movie. So, you know, we'll get to see some more stuff probably around the summertime because if the movie's coming out in the uh, at the end of the year – Probably maybe San Diego Comic-Con or somewhere around mid-year. We'll get to see some pictures and actual samples of what these Hobbit things are going to look like. I think their plan is a good one, although it does have the opportunity, and not in this case, not in the Lord of the Rings case, but some movies, they're creating an excitement around a movie or series, but they're containing it to maybe one or two year cycles of toys, like they did with Indiana Jones, like they did with the Toy Story, like they did with Cars. And that way, it keeps it fresh. And then with this Disney tie-in, other than Star Wars, which has gone on now, will be pushing 15 years soon. These other ones seem to be maybe a small period of time. Harry Potter. Some movies they didn't even make sets for. They went back and did that once people said, hey, how come we're not having any sets? But it keeps it fresh. And that way, there's not old Harry Potter stuff sitting on the shelf yeah. while you've got these new exciting movies. Because people have a short attention span sadly i'm still holding out from my tron set i still want tron it's disney they would they, they would make great lego products i have to say it was a missed opportunity by not doing that and i'm not sure what the deal was because they did have the license i just think they were focusing on prince of persia and then when that turned out to be a failure they were like okay we got to regroup but i think if the plan to make more tron movies is realistic then i think we'll see some classic tron sets Tron Legacy and then whatever the new Tron movie. I think we'll see something somewhere because it is a pretty nice idea of what to do with, including all these Pixar movies that they're coming with, and not just for Duplo. I think they have a lot to work with. That's in addition to the regular lines that they make, like Lego City and things like that. Well, it's a good thing they never tried to do a John Carter of Mars line since it was Disney and they took such a bath on that movie. I agree. Now, speaking of Duplos, the last line we got to see was a somewhat of a smaller line aimed at more younger kids, and it's the Duplo line of planes, which is related to the Cars line you mentioned earlier. What do you think of those? I think it's good because it's a Pixar-style movie, but it's not a Pixar movie. It's more of a spin-off that they decided to release, and it's a good venue for it. The pieces and the characters look good based on what they are in the film, but it's not the type of theme that would have a full-blown, you know, $90 set. These will probably be some of more of the cheaper sets in the Duplo area for kids. And, you know, other collectors might grab them. I tend to not really grab the Duplo stuff unless something like Tigger or somebody, it's a special one-off. And in, in this case, I think it'll be nice. And if I guess if, if this Planes movie and another Cars movie potentially come out, well, then we'll see more of those. But until that, I think it'll be more like the Duplo line, and that's it. Well, let's uh, now take a little break and listen to an interview I did with Amanda Santora from Lego, where she gave us the tour of all the stuff and showed us and gave us extra information that we never knew before. Let's listen to that. This is Carlos Perón, and we are here with Amanda Santora from Lego, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the Marvel superhero and the DC superhero lines. Yes, so we're very excited. We introduced LEGO DC and Marvel Super Heroes last year to great success, and so we're excited to expand on that line. We have two items from each of the lines out right now on shelves, so two Batman sets on shelf, two Spider-Man sets on shelf, and then for each line we also have new items coming out later in the year. So as you see here in front of us at DC Super Heroes, we have three sets of various sizes and price points based on the new Man of Steel movie coming out this summer. So these come out in May. People love LEGO Superman. Obviously, these are really great really detailed sets and both kids and adults really love recreating those scenes from the films in lego form so we know these are um, going to be a huge hit and people are really 
excited about them, and we started showing them yesterday morning, and the adult fans went crazy for them. So we're super, super excited. Yeah, this looks great. Yes, and then we have, we obviously had the Avengers last year, so this year we'll continue with that license with Iron Man 3, the Iron new Man movie 3. coming out. So this comes out in March, again, prior to the film. Some recreated scenes here from the movies, and they're really cute. I mean, they're great minifigures, and as you see here on the bottom of Iron Man, he has the jet up <laughs> uh, with the blue pegs underneath him. So very visual, again, a huge hit with fans of all ages. And what are the price points for some of these? They start at about the $12 range and work all the way up to about $40 to $50. That's not bad. Yeah, That's so bad. a variety. We want to ensure that there's a variety of different sets and sizes that they can interact with each other and, you know, give people a choice whether they want a larger set or something small just to get started mm -hmm. building. Now, for Spider-Man, even though yes. there's no movie coming out yes. this year, you still have some products. We do. We do. We have the license for the Ultimate Spider-Man, so we have some great products here. We have the Daily Bugle Showdown. It's on shelves right now. It's $50. A lot of cool functionality. You see the really detailed oh, nope. Spider-Man <laughs> minifigure here. He's attached with his web to the ship trying to get the bad guys trying to get venom and then the daily bugle here so if we turn it around you'll see oh, we wow. have the office here with the computer with um jonah jameson, jonah jameson yeah jonah yeah. jameson and the office chair here and obviously all the spider-man pictures trying to figure out who is spider-man so really fun <laughs> and detailed a lot of role play here this popped off earlier and that's because it actually is obviously a showdown so you want to try and get out so the window can pop off I see, I see. there's webs on the side really cute and fun detailed and we also have Beetle here, which I believe for the first time is the first Beetle Lego minifigure we've ever had. Now, what's cool I noticed on the Superman ones is that, you know, you get to see some of the action, but you don't reveal too much, so you don't really spoil much Exactly, by at exactly. It's just kind of a recreation, but it's not really telling you deep dive into the storyline or what's going on. And similar to Spider-Man, on the DC side, we have some Batman stuff that we is... Do kind of crossover and Exactly. Leftover. Some of it is from The Dark Knight Rises, as you see here, as yep. you call out on the box. And so this is that famous scene when Bane is escaping from Wall Street and mm -hmm. taking over the bank. So we have that license, and we also have one here that's not tied to the movie that's just kind of very evergreen classic General, Batman. Right. Exactly. So we have Arctic Batman and Mr. Freeze kind of battling through with Aquaman as well. So lots of cool collection minifigures there. Great. So we love superheroes with Marvel and DC. Great partners with us, and we have you know great products that really represent those properties and speak to those fans that love those characters. All right, we're going to take a quick look at the Long Ranger line now. Yeah, so this is Disney the Lone Ranger. Obviously, the new film is coming out later this year, which fans are really excited about. And we've had Lego Western scenes before, but actually not in 10 years. So we're long overdue for a Lego Western. Really excited about this. Again, people love recreating classic films and scenes in Lego form. So we're really excited to have really great detailed minifigures. We have the Lone Ranger. We have Hi Ho Silver, which you'll see there on the train set. Tonto himself. Wow. So lots of cool functionality. Again, a range of price points working our way from $13 up to the train set, which is $100. So they really interact with each other. Uh, lots of moving functions and features. Again, great for both kids and adults. And they're really, really cool vehicles in this collection. We have a stage coach here, very classic. And for the first time ever, a steam engine train in Lego form. <laughs> It's a little tidbit for wow, those fans out there. So amazing. We've had Lego trains for many years and are some of the most popular sets within Lego, but for the first time it's a steam engine. Now I noticed obviously a lot of pieces are original made for the film, but were you able to use any like leftover or old yes, cowboy the, and Indian type of stuff? Yes, for the most part, almost everything you see in Lego sets are already made Lego bricks. So right. we have restrictions on how many new elements we're allowed to create each I year. See. They keep a very tight hold on it because they want to ensure that everything is always, of course, compatible with each other, but they don't want to over complicated. So there's a few new elements for, for the most part in the entire portfolio. It's mainly existing bricks and elements. Wow. Now, I also love the packaging, the fact that you guys worked the actual picture of the exactly. star of the movie exactly. into it. It's important to have, you know, we have Army Hammer there, the mm -hmm. Lone Ranger himself. So it's very important that people recognize that this is associated with the film and that it's a direct representation <laughs> and a partnership with our friends at Disney. Good. I guess so the, we have Johnny Depp is not going to steal the movie. No, the, the Lone no, Ranger no. is still the star. It's all about the Lone Ranger. Tonto, of course, <laughs> is a big character, but it's all about the Lone Ranger. This looks um, wonderful. This is awesome. We, I love the high host silvers on top of the train here. And of course, he can move. He has pegged feet, so you can put him on any brick or just put him on the ground. And this is fun. This little water tower. You can oh look my God. down to <laughs> stop the bad guys from getting away on the train. This is definitely like a Christmas item, I guess, for it's the expensive one, but it looks it's fantastic. It's a big one, but it, it's great, and the train um, tracks are all customizable, so they don't have to make them in a circle. You can move them around and kind of make your great. whole scene there. And then we can transition into Lego yeah. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Which we introduced last year. We have the license for all three films. Obviously, all the movies are out, <laughs> so we, we don't have any spoilers. We see um, some great minifigures right. and scenes. We have Gandalf the White for the first time in Lego minifigure form. Oh. We've had him as Gandalf the Gray, obviously. That's right. That's um, right. So we have that, and we also have some new 
new minifigures with the elves here with wow, their ears on the hair. So lots of fun details. Again, both kids and adult fans love these. And, we, and the pirate ship. And the pirate ship and the captain chained up here. So obviously <laughs> a lot of fun role play here. Very kind of dark for, and spooky. For the fans of the film, this is the only scene where Peter Jackson made a cameo in a deleted scene oh, coming out of the that. pirate ship. Learning something new every day. That's very <laughs> cool. Maybe next year we'll have to make him a new Wow, this is great. Form. Now you also have not on display here, but you yes. do have some more Hobbit stuff we coming do. out. We do. So we introduced uh, Lego the Hobbit in December of 2012, and what's great about that line is that the movies are new, so we're releasing the products in conjunction with a new film. So oh, the I first see. set of items were based on the first Hobbit film, and December 2013, all the sets will be based on the second, second Hobbit film. in conjunction with the film release. Great, great. And then, of course, Lego Star Wars, Star Wars one of our biggest... Uh, the biggest and the first ever Lego license line in 1999. That's right, that's right. And last year, we just re-signed our agreement for another 10 years. So there'll be Lego Star Wars for many years to come. And, and the movies the are going to keep coming, so you guys <laughs> yes, are in good shape. Yes, and we love working you know, with our friends at Lucas and now Disney, <laughs> of course. And so what's great about it is that we always have a lot of new items coming out. So a lot of classic items from some of the original films right. and some from the new series and the new right. content. Right, this is, this is mainly stuff that's on the shelves already we're looking at right now, which this is the... This is January. We can go. We'll go down and well, see. There is some stuff in August. Yeah, as we'll look well. at yeah. that. Well, this this, this includes the uh, the Headhunter and Jabba's Palace, yeah. the Rancor the Pit. The Rancor Pit. So we had Jabba's Palace last year, and of course, Jabba's Palace is on top of the Rancor you Pit. You can connect them. Right. It goes on top of the set. So mm -hmm. that's great. Some you know spooky little scenes and everything here. And of course, people go crazy for these minifigures. And obviously, <laughs> we've had you know Han Solo and Princess Leia for many years, but we try and do new updated features on the minifigures right. to add to that collectability and to that excitement. And from what I remember, from a little bit of the history of Lego itself, is that they have a deal that they cannot just manufacture the minifigures. In other mm -hmm. words, if you like Star Wars minifigures, you got to buy the toy that comes with the minifigure. And that that is true so for you don't all, compete with every like every, li figure every license line. Yes, you have to actually. They don't. We don't sell any licensed minifigures separately. They're right. all sold within the set. Yes. Now here we have again part of the existing line, which is the Yoda green line. But I haven't really seen some of these yet. These yeah, are new. These are, oh yeah, this is definitely new yes, stuff here. This is all new. So the, this all comes out in August. Okay. So we have. Kind of the first look at the back half of the year and some great these are some great smaller price points about the 20 25 dollar range okay um and these all come out later and they all come out with several mini figures so you can add to that role play and kind of that figure play within the scenes and with the vehicles so and these are very current episodes we've seen uh the clone war episodes where you see exactly. mandalorians and darth maul with the mechanic legs exactly yes we have a license for the clone wars as well so it's mm -hmm. great we're able to recreate those scenes and then some bigger sets here that are coming out in august um, we have the Stealth Star Fighter here, and we have some. This is actually from new content that's coming out later in the original Lego Star Wars content for the first time. So, usually oh. when we have Lego Star Wars content, it's recreated right, from right, right. Star Wars, but we will have something original coming out more or to Le come. Lego related? Lego Star Wars okay. content, and we're doing some big events leading up to it, and this is actually from that content. Oh, okay, because I know there's like a Yoda. Uh, Lego television thing exactly. coming up so and we, stuff like yeah, that. So, yeah, exactly. We usually are just recreating re Lucas content, but we're now You've making got your some original. Stuff. That's exactly. Great. So we're excited. Now, you have uh, Dooku up here, uh, the fight with Yoda from uh, the yes. Duel and Geonosis. Exactly. That's another August piece. It is, and that one's $40. And wow. then we have, this is great too. Two here. This is ATTE. This comes out in August for ninety dollars. Really, really cool. Lots of little secret hidden compartments. Oh boy, going here. Lots back to school figures. is going to be tough this yeah, year. Yeah. Well, this oh is right time. Maybe uh, I can be uh, pre Christmas. <laughs> exactly. Or a good report card benefit now. Now this, yeah, this guy is great. It has yeah. extra pieces on the sides that you, we haven't seen before. Exactly. The little cockpits on the side exactly. and the internal cockpits. And the mini figures, of course, fit inside there. Great. Always fix so you the role play value. Uh, and this is great. Again, lots of role play here with moving parts and. This just snaps on and off, so you can <laughs> customize it, and lots of great collectible minifigures, of course. And then, of course, the advent calendar, which we introduced Another a few one, years right? ago. Um, very popular. Very, very popular. Always sells out. Huge with collectors, huge with kids. Parents love it, I think, because it's a non-food related advent calendar. So instead of having chocolate every day, kids you are doing a little building. Little exactly. Little and all that comes disassembled. So, of course, you have to construct it. It's all of Lego. And this, I believe, is... <laughs> yeah, it was really This is... Uh, Santa Jango Fett, uh, I believe. We had <laughs> Santa Yoda, we had oh Santa God. Darth Maul, and now this is in there. He is with his Great. Santa and his presents. Great, as well as presents. Back. And this comes out in September, of course, right before Christmas for $40. And the big daddy of this year is yes, Java's sale barge. Exactly. <laughs> for, it comes out in August. It's $120. Wow. And I'm really excited about this one. There's Jabba right there, uh, R2-D2, Princess Leia. So, yeah. A lot, lot of cool. new characters for the first time. Exactly. I can see them exactly. all over the place. And it's great, too, because for collectors, we call out on the packaging, right? Which, 
everything that's brand new that's never been seen before in this form. Perfect. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's really excited. Lots of great things coming out from all of our license lines. I mean, of course, with LEGO Star Wars, our biggest license line. Great. Okay. We're looking at the uh, LEGO Dupla Planes line, which is related to the Cars line, If you know, from the Cars films. Exactly. We're excited. We've had LEGO Cars, LEGO Cars 2, and now, of course, Nets Transition LEGO Planes. So this movie comes out this summer. I believe Disney just announced it's going to be in theaters. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're really excited. It comes out in August. This is our Duplo line, which is our preschool line. We like to say bigger bricks for smaller hands. So okay. you'll notice the bricks are bigger. Right. But what's great about Duplo is that it's compatible with regular Lego system brick. So if there's an older child that wants to play with planes and add on his regular Lego bricks, they can definitely do that. These are great. Lots of fun characters from the scenes. We have Skipper's Flight School and two Uber Secret other sets coming out that okay. we really can't talk about because it's spoilers from the film. <laughs> but very, very excited. Obviously, obviously they're direct recreations if we have right. such they, strict embargo. They, so. they look just like they came out of the movie. Exactly. And they have that Disney look to them. They do. They do. And we know that this is going to be a huge film for those young preschoolers. We want to make sure they're able to really recreate those scenes mm -hmm. uh, in Lego and Duplo form. So super excited about this. We have three sets coming out, a variety of sizes and price points, and we'll all be on shelf come August. August. Great. Yes. So, again, this is going to be a very busy summer for all of us to prepare for Christmas. But uh, we've got to wait for August. Well, thank you very thank much, you. Amanda. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Have a great Thanks choice again. there. All right. Well, that was great. Well, once again, I would like to thank everybody that helped us with our preparation for Toy Fair this year, specifically the people from Lego. Amanda Santoro, as I mentioned before, was our host, and she was able to show us all these great, great toys that are coming out, and we can't wait to hopefully meet with her again next year. And James arranged a lot of this. What do you remember from that, James? Well, I was able to meet one of the presidents last year of the Lego divisions, and I think they're all great. They were very, very helpful in getting us access. Sometimes it's difficult because of the crowds, and I really think they helped us a lot, and they were really nice, and, you know, I appreciate it all that they've done for us. So I look forward to next year's Toy Fair. This one just barely ended, and I'm already excited about the next one. Yeah, no kidding. Well, i like to thank James for joining us today at our New York Toy Fair 2013 edition, specifically having to do with Lego. we got to remember that, because next week we're going to continue, and we're going to hit Hasbro, our other big, gigantic addiction that we have specifically to Star Wars toys. So until then, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you here next time on Geek Fest Rants. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Lego is here. Hey, kids, look. A whole new world to build. Because Lego is here. This young boy has such fun. He used Lego one by one. With his nap paddy wet, don't stop a plane. This young boy glad Lego came. Lego, a whole new world to build. This young girl had such fun. She used Lego one by one. With a knick-knack, patty whack, no the house of brand. This young girl's a Lego fan. Build hotels, animals, people, boats, skyscrapers, and more. So kids, get your Lego set now at department and toy stores everywhere. Lego, the sensation of Europe, now made in America by Samsonite, who make it better for longer-lasting fun. Stop.